Hello and welcome to the ISRK podcast. I'm your host, Kumar Vikran. I'm a doctoral candidate at the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, Hanyang University, Seoul, Korea. ISRK, that is Indian Students and Researchers in Korea, is a voluntary support group that works towards the benefit of the Indian diaspora in Korea. So on today's episode, I have the pleasure to be in conversation with Craig Miskel, uh, who has been uh, who has joined us here today from the land down under in Australia. And uh, Craig, Craig is a scientific illustrator and a graphic designer. Um, and um, he has in his own website, Cam Graphics, which will be linked down in the description. So, Craig, thank you very much for joining us uh, today. It's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you. My pleasure to be here. Mm-hmm. And to begin the conversation, I would r- like to get right into the hot topic of today. That is uh, your career, because I'm very much intrigued by it. Like you were studying chemical engineering, then you shifted gears and went into graphic design. So that is very interesting to me. So can you flesh that out a bit and um, expound on it? Like, why did you decide to change the career trajectory and how did it happen? Um, yes, well, I guess, um, like a lot of people, um, I went, I'm assuming a lot of people, um, I went straight from, <laughs> yes. straight, straight from, I, I can only talk to myself, so I don't, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I went basically straight from high school, secondary school for us, mm-hmm. uh, straight into university. That, that mm-hmm. seemed to be, that was just, that was, uh, seemed yeah. to be, that was just the, what everyone did. So you, you just right. had, enough, had good enough marks, you went to university, mm-hmm. um, and at that stage, I I guess looking back on it, I didn't really know what what I liked. I didn't really know, I didn't really um, have a good idea about what all these careers were basically. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I thought on the um, looking on the face of it, I think mm-hmm. um, I liked chemistry at high school, mm-hmm. and I liked sort of making things and tinkering with things mm-hmm. that sort of stuff. And thought, oh yeah, chemistry and engineering that seemed to, <laughs> seemed to yeah. go together. Um, but um, once I got to university and then um, uh, started finding out what the job really entailed, mm. Um, mm. It, it just, it sort of, I realized that it's not, wasn't really, didn't really suit me. Um, mm-hmm. And sort of being, and sort of not, not that the people weren't nice people, they're all lovely people on engineering, oh, yeah. um, like, like yourself. Um, <laughs> yeah. engineer. yeah. um, engine, engineers are, are great people. Uh, that is, it wasn't really for me. Um, and so right. it took me a couple of years of um, being young and, um, and sort of finding my way uh-huh. uh, to realize that uh, this is not really for me. Um, and so then I, I basically, uh-huh. um, how I came from there to, to doing what I do now Right. Uh, was a very roundabout way. I'd never done art <laughs> at school at all. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I wasn't. One, I'm not one of those lifelong artist people from, mm. from a very young age. I see. Um, I, I'm not sure if, what it was, but um, I always thought of myself as someone that couldn't draw or couldn't do these sort of things. <laughs> um, so, and it turns out that I can. Yeah. So I basically took off. I, I, I went for a drive around Australia for a year yeah. with a friend mm-hmm. of mine. Um, so left um, left university um, didn't didn't finish um, uh, the degrees just uh, decided to, um, to to drop out of those oh. um, and uh, yeah so I, I never never finished those finished those degrees um, I was I was probably a year or two away from finishing those but right as, as you can imagine in the second and third years they get they get really um, yeah uh, really full on a lot of lot of hard work mm-hmm. and I just found it I, I couldn't put the work in for to a field that I wasn't really enthusiastic about, wasn't passionate about. Yeah, like it was um, not meant for you. So mm-hmm. uh, exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I still enjoy science. I still like science and, and sure, finding yeah. out about new, new things and stuff like that. Um, but uh, so yeah, so my so my role now suits me suits me perfectly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, yeah, went went basically on a big trip around Australia with a with a good friend of mine. Right. Um, stayed with some family over in, in mm-hmm. Queensland. I'm I'm in Perth at the moment. Uh, that's where I was uh, born and grew up. Uh, mm-hmm. So I drove around Australia, stayed with some family in Queensland, mm-hmm. saw a bit of the world, a bit more, got a bit more experience, um, or a bit more of the country and a bit more experience. Mm-hmm. Um, drove back um, uh, through all the amazing uh, wide open spaces, landscapes that we have here. I was by myself at that stage. Uh, my, right. my friend was uh, had, had already came home at that stage and I was by myself and did a big long drive by myself. Had a lot of time to think. Um, so sort of came back and decided I was going to try try anything, try 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 anything and everything. 
um, and I took took a drawing class first time first first drawing class I'd ever taken and um, found out that I actually had must have been a good teacher or something I found out I did have some um, some skill um, and very soon after that um, the a family friend uh, had done some work for a, a scientific research group oh. and they were looking for somebody to yeah. do some diagrams for them sort of in-house oh, yeah, yeah. Um, sort of on a contract basis but but mainly um, something like someone early on that they could train up um, to do all to do all of their diagrams um, and so I just went along there and they basically um, introduced me to the, the software and um, all the all the diagrams that they um, that they needed doing and right. um, yeah they've been an ongoing client for about 20 years now so yeah. so um, so yeah and so I basically learned on the job um, so I, I got that that sort of foot in the door right um, and they they trained me up in the, in the things that they they wanted to do mm-hmm. and then while that was happening I still had part-time jobs um, mm. I did a lot of studying I went back to as a mature age student and did fine arts um, sort of secondary school level fine arts which I'd never done um, so I got a lot of a lot of um, grounding in um, sort of art 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 and design, right like the sort of fundamental thing. techniques and stuff like that mm-hmm. yes yeah uh-huh. um, and over the years um, sort of did part time study as I was working uh-huh. um, in some graphic graphic did a, did a bit more fine arts um, sort of tertiary level fine arts and tertiary level graphic design right um, studies as well uh-huh. and um, yeah mostly it's just mostly. It's my skills have been gained by doing, um, by just by just. Yeah. Very work. fascinating. Yeah, thanks for sharing. And it it was, uh, it's actually very inspirational that you follow your lead of what you are meant to do. Like you go ahead and find that way. Many people are actually not able to do that. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So thank you. Yeah, it was a, it was a big. Um, I guess could be seen you know, as a risky sort of move, but I was I was lucky enough yeah. to have good. I was lucky enough to have good family support. And a very supportive family uh, mm-hmm. behind me to sort of, um, yeah, be there with whatever decision I made. So it was, right, yeah, I was, mm-hmm. I was very lucky in that regard. I can imagine a lot of people would be, yeah, would not have that reception <laughs> if they decided yeah. I'm just going to leave my degree and go and do <laughs> yeah. whatever. And right, like, what? No, you can't. Um, so yes, I was very lucky in that regard. Yeah. And um, actually, I was very much interested in knowing, like, what goes on into your job profile at the moment. Uh, basically, when I hear, like, scientific illustrator, graphic designer, so I think, like, oh, you must be taking on projects and um, designing and doing as the, like, what the client wants. Uh, so can you basically expound on that? Like, what kind of uh, profile goes into your current job scenario? Um, yeah, there's, there's not not really any typical sort of day really um right, right. it's one of those fields that mm-hmm. um it's uh, flexibly it's very flexible mm-hmm. and it's very um it can be very busy times and very and very slow times yeah, in terms right. of um because you basically get the mercy of whenever anybody else wants work done you, you're you're not self-directed so sure. i mean you're self-directed as much as you can be in terms of um, networking and trying mm-hmm. to find clients and stuff like that uh but basically um, it's funny that uh, the uh, I, I imagine you 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 know a bit about writing papers and things like that. Right, right. Every, the the dealing with the graphics is sort of the very last step at the end of it. <laughs> yes. Sort of uh, at the end of it, you've got all your wonderful data and your graph, <laughs> graph is not really uh, it's not really showing what I want it to do. Is there a way we can? I actually I actually leave a blank page for that and I write all this stuff and then when everything is written down, then I make the diagrams. So. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's, uh, well, it makes sense because it, it's. That's the one thing that I've found is you don't really know what you need out of the diagram until right. you've made all your scientific mm-hmm. discoveries, until you've, um, I mean, often you can make diagrams uh, of methods mm. early on because um, sure. if, sure. if you already know the steps that you take, um, certainly with um, experimental um, science of science. Um, but yeah, it's 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 always seems to be the very last thing uh, for yeah, everybody yeah. Um, to, to deal with, which is fair enough. It, it is, it, yes. is, it um, can be seen as sort of an afterthought. Uh, but um, and also that's that's a good time to do it as well because right. there's because um, as you know um, the whole process of, of science um, you're finding out about this particular right. subject you're writing about as you go so um, it's it's very difficult to to, to it's to funny that you mentioned yeah. it's funny that you mentioned that because sometimes you know happens like I'm doing uh, catalysis research so what happens is initially my proposition is that okay like uh, this 
organic compound is oxidizing into carbon dioxide. So that is happening. But to find out the intermediates, like the process through which that reaction is happening, so we do some spectroscopy experiments. So maybe sometimes it happens like I make a diagram to show that process. But then when I get the spectroscopy data, I go back to the diagram and insert those uh, intermediate pathways that were actually taking place. So yeah, I understand, yeah. Yes, yeah, it's sort of, it, um, it kind of, it, your ideas evolve as, as, right, you, say, right, as right. you go along, as, as they should, yeah, if it, it would be, um, that certainly, um, you wouldn't want to be a scientist that has very rigid ideas and say, it's, <laughs> my, my findings have to fit to what I, for, to what I thought was going to happen, uh, if you could be flexible there, um, and certainly in the diagrams, it's, sure. it's good to do that at the end, so that you can incorporate all those, all those findings that you have along the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so um, I guess back to the question, my typical day would be um, there's a lot uh, being sort of uh, freelance and working for myself. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of just general boring administrative uh, things of like invoicing and checking emails and all right. that kind of stuff. Um, keeping organized is is um, mm. maybe not my strong suit, but it's something that definitely you need to come on to keep on top of. Um, I could probably do better with that. Um, uh, being an artist, um, uh, if you can see my my desk here is a bit messy with things all over it so i don't know um, it, it looks uh, <laughs> it looks oh, like this is right, you've yeah. seen it before this was this is the cleaned up version yeah this, <laughs> there was bits of artwork and drawings yeah, everywhere yeah. Mm -hmm. um but uh, yeah so it's a uh, uh yeah keeping organized keeping mm -hmm. on top of things and um and basically um bearing in mind um oh yeah a little bit uh Oh, so I'm jumping ahead. So yeah, so yeah, basically um, keep track of my ongoing projects. Right. Uh, see what stage right. they're at. Mm -hmm. uh, which uh, whether need, where the first draft need to be sent off, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so I, I basically get um, talk to people mm -hmm. either by email or via Zoom um, or in person uh, if I can. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, uh, to basically uh, get the, get a good idea of essentially a design brief of what they want for their diary, right. mm -hmm. um, and I sit down and talk with them in depth about what the scientific, what the reason behind this diagram is, what the scientific concept they're trying to show, mm -hmm. everything like that. Um, talk a little bit about design sometimes, uh, if they have any particular, um, uh, what do you call it, style guides from a publication or that sure. they need, yeah, things yeah. like that. Oh, um, perhaps any references or any descriptions, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, any text that needs to go in there. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I dumped my desk there. Um, any text that needs to go in, um, yeah, technical details about, right. Mm -hmm. font sizes and mm -hmm. um and diagram sizes because it's, it's always good to um know those constraints up front right if right. you know that it needs to be 200 millimeters by mm -hmm. by, by a 200 millimeter diagram um then i won't make then i can i know how to scale things properly whereas if it's going to get going to be shrunk down to a 10 millimeter square right all my font sizes will be too small if they get shrunk mm -hmm. down so i need to so it's yeah. good to yeah. um basically nail those things down at the mm -hmm. start. So that sort of, have that sort of a initial meeting, then I'll go off and, and do all the design work myself, mm -hmm. um, then send in sort of a first draft for people to, mm -hmm. for the scientist to look at or the client to look at. Uh, and then then comes the editing and they'll basically go through it and say, that's not quite right. I'd like this thing to be a bit bigger, <laughs> this, this thing to be a bit more emphasized or um, okay. oh, maybe I didn't explain myself and this, and this is, um, so it's, it's becomes an iterative process from there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's very rarely that um, it's just a, it's just a one step process. Mm -hmm. um, it can often be sort of a couple of weeks of going back and forth and um, that, and the scientists, once, once people see things visually, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, mm -hmm. it's, um, they, they get more see, ideas like yeah. in which direction they want to take it so they give you feedback then you reorganize and mm, i understand so back and forth <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah um and that's just part of the process yeah, that's, yeah. um and yeah and so eventually they'll get to a, get to a final draft which they um the client will determine what what sort of file up file right file sizes they need and file formats and things like that because there's all, all various um various types to do that pdf vectors um right right like so, um, mm -hmm. yeah. I reckon that the networking must be playing a big role in your field, like you also touched upon it briefly earlier. So how important is LinkedIn in, in like, I also got to know about you through LinkedIn. So how important it is uh, in yes. today's world. And like, I think um, every, almost every professional is on LinkedIn, right? So it's very much connected. So how, how much an important role does it play in your 
uh, career and in your profession? A big, a big role. Yeah, mm -hmm. networking is essentially right the way to find work, really. Um, <laughs> yes. And that's that's the only way to do it. There's there's no there's <laughs> yeah. no for me certainly there's no there right. there possibly are um, scientific illustration organizations. Yeah, I, I reckon that in your field it it, it must be like uh, playing a much more bigger role. So that's why I wanted mm -hmm. to ask you about it. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, so uh, I'm lucky in a few respects. Essentially, uh, yeah, LinkedIn play, plays a big role. Um, right. I've only been using LinkedIn for the past couple of years. Oh. Um, I'm not much of a uh, social media person to start with. I was I've never have been, but um, certainly for business purposes, um, sure. Uh, I'm trying my best at that. Um, so I've certainly got <laughs> yeah. lots of learn there. Um, but yeah, it's it's, it's been productive so far. Um, and so yeah, networking, uh, reaching out to people as mm. as, uh, as as we've connected on here. Um, also, per, uh, what they call content creation, producing things. Sure. Um, uh, so it's it's often um, often showing people what you can do um, is a good way of, of getting your name out there. Right. Um, so if you have uh, diagrams that you have created that you're that are, you're able to share, uh, just um, doing posts, LinkedIn posts are, are a great way to do that. Uh, Twitter is actually seems to be quite a good oh, yeah. place for scientists as well, in yeah. particular. Um, uh, yeah, now, it personal, actually, yeah. now it is lots, lots of the journals are also on Twitter nowadays. So oh, okay, yes, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> Yeah. following all of those it's it, twitter seems to be a good place to keep up with um information as well yeah, and yeah. also there's um yeah lots of people throwing out mm -hmm. throwing out um uh very off the cuff sort of comments uh requests for help and things like that i sort of helped someone recently who was who was just oh, i'm not sure what to do with this diagram has anybody got some advice and and um and with all the hashtags and that you can they sort of pop up in whatever mm -hmm. you're following um and so I was, yeah i was able, able to help out this this scientist to, uh, with a diagram they were doing um Mm -hmm. yeah through there so it was um it was nice yeah so, what, so yeah definitely yeah linkedin definitely and uh networking yeah. right right so actually, actually i saw your one of those uh covid syringe and um you made a recent diagram regarding the covid uh oh yes yeah uh, vaccination right mm. yes yeah yeah that was that was through a, a client who's now an ongoing client um right, right. connected uh via linkedin actually so it was um, mm, that's right yeah, so actually um, i'm i'm not on twitter but i actually follow i saw through your profile briefly for my background research so oh yes yeah, yeah. i i saw that yeah anyway yes, i don't use twitter too much i probably could use it more but yeah, yeah. right right mm -hmm. so do you have any tips or suggestions for students who are actually good in uh, drawing because actually being a PhD student and uh, I actually talk with many grad students and as you know in science like you have to effectively communicate your data and your results to the audience like you have to give many presentations and conferences etc so many of the grad students I find that they have a touch for art like uh, they draw very beautiful images to be frank like it's conveying the data like hardcore statistics of science but still it feels like they have an eye for art so what uh, do you have any suggestion or tips for such people like uh, through which they can grow their um, art or stuff like that definitely yeah um first first thing with art is just to just to do it as, as many as much as you can um right. practice really is um i wouldn't say practice makes perfect but practice mm -hmm. um oh, there's a quote from somebody i can't i forget who it is but mm -hmm. essentially it's something along the lines of you are what you do every day right um and um, I'm sorry, I'm, I apologize to whoever the quote is from, but just something that stuck in my head. I've heard yeah, it somewhere. It's okay. um, and so, yeah, do it every day. Um, yeah. And uh, you will basically get more more confident. And it's a, um, so, yeah, in terms of just uh, producing art, I would certainly uh, say do it every day as much as you right. can. Anyway. Mm -hmm. anyway. Um, and also in terms of actually creating illustrations, mm -hmm. um, I said, same again a lot of a lot of um my perspective of doing art is just by doing it mm. and you um there's certainly um if you can if there is a is a fellow if you're with your own science or a fellow scientist who needs who needs um a diagram right. you can just clean up a little bit or if they've got a rough rough hand-drawn sketch that they oh what am i going to do with this and just just even for even I hesitate to say do work for free, uh, but certainly if you're if you're practicing and you're right. and you're just helping out a friend or something or or for your own work, I, it's a, it's great practice um, because or, or perhaps someone else the, the, yeah. or perhaps in the very early stages, like 
you're uh, in those times it could be more of a gaining experience kind of thing yeah yes yeah that's that's, that's true it's, it's it's up to you it's a very personal thing there's lots of people that, right, that right. do do things for for um experience sure. and it's and it can be and it can be um it can be certainly beneficial uh but uh yeah it it's, it's, a tricky, it's a slippery slope so, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a slippery slope because then, because right. the, the classic thing with um, if uh, any anyone who knows anyone who does any bit of art, um, your friends and family they all think you it's pretty easy. So they they they, so they don't see the hard work behind it. Like oh, I just you draw all the time. Can you just draw me a picture? But like, yeah. mm. That's a, it's um, I understand. It's frustrating. Until and unless someone has drawn a full blown illustration or a full blown drawing, they do not understand how much effort actually goes into creating that. Yes, so. yeah, and, 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 <laughs> yeah. It's definitely, definitely worth um, compensating people, right, sure. compensating artists. Yeah, um, so, certainly self, self, a bit self-serving there, but um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's uh, I see, I hear a lot of horror stories of of, of people. Right, who, actually, who, yeah. So I actually it. follow some of the other scientific illustrators on LinkedIn and also on Instagram and others who actually draw cover art for the journals, and some of. Oh, okay. Right. So some of them actually have those kind of horror stories and one of them actually mm -hmm. shared it and she's based in the US and I actually read it and it was like and some scientist actually contacted her to get the journal. So usually they have a contract basis and like you also talked about so they pay and it's a service right so that's yeah. that, that that is happening but sometimes they just get the image and then they vanish like <laughs> yes so yeah, without, without paying yeah. so that was a very yeah. horrific yeah yeah you're right i like the term you used it's definitely a service yeah mm -hmm. and if, like think about it as like any other service like sure. you, oh, you, yeah. wouldn't, you wouldn't call up a plumber to come to your house and, and, and fix <laughs> yeah. something and say oh right. yeah i'll just tell all my friends that you're a great plumber i'm not right. gonna pay you oh. you can't people have to live yeah at a certain point um so yeah it's, you do have to be careful out there um but yeah certainly practicing uh, um on uh anywhere you can and yeah. as long as people know that this is a you're doing it for a favor and they sure, as, long sure. as, the, as long as the ground rules are set pretty clear that this is not going to be an ongoing i'm going to give you free mm -hmm. work all the time um yeah that's a great way to practice mm -hmm. um and as as far as actually creating diagrams right. um there's there's a few um i've sort of picked up some things over the years that sort of sort of main ideas to think about as you're as you're crafting diagrams and they can they can really um polish uh um the final make product. things look a bit more professional than than uh if so if, for instance if you're uh, a lot of people use know how to use powerpoint for doing other power presentations and stuff like that mm -hmm. i'm a big advocate of using programs that you know well uh, right because that's a, it's, it's never um uh, most of these programs you can you can do a lot with powerpoint you can do a lot with with those sort of programs, especially if you can do it quickly and you know how you know all the capabilities of the program. Right. Um, so certainly, if you're going towards the more professional mm -hmm. route, right, eventually there's a lot of uh, a lot of extra features uh, for things like that I use, like Illustrator and Photoshop and mm -hmm. and Corel Draw and things like that. Mm -hmm. They do have a lot of um, that the are professional level programs. Mm -hmm. But when you're certainly when you're starting out, and if you're someone that just just needs to, you don't want to be a professional illustrator or anything yeah, like yeah. that. You're yeah. just trying to get your your diagram for your PowerPoint presentation or your poster or your or your or your uh, paper um, to look as good as it can it can be. And right. there's a there's a few little design principles that I've picked up over the years that mm -hmm. um, essentially getting getting things lined up, uh, essentially using using guidelines. Making sure all your sort of boxes are all lined up mm -hmm. with each other, aligned, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, making sure everything's consistent, like right. you've got the same font size throughout the whole diagram. It's it's it's, um, it's amazing the number of times I see people have this is in twelve point font, then it's eleven point font, and then it's like thirteen point font, and it and it looks um, and it might seem visually to your to your eye that it seems right. looks okay, mm -hmm. but. Uh, your eye can pick up the technical differences. Um, that, that's that's one thing that I've noticed over the years is if there's a way to make things exactly the same, make them exactly the same, because your eye will pick it up. It won't necessarily pick it up that they're massively different, right. but it'll pick up there's something's not quite right. This isn't mm. not polished or professional because that box is one millimeter larger than that box. <laughs> yeah. Your brain sort of just 
it sort of you might not see it to the naked eye right uh, but it does come off as a bit sloppy um and, and so little things like that make things if you've got four boxes in the mm -hmm. on the on your page makes them all exactly the same size all 40 right. millimeters by 40 millimeters also exactly I reckon, lined up with each other things like that yeah i reckon that al alignment must be playing a big role like a vertical alignment horizontal alignment make it uniform yeah yeah and I there's think, a yeah Yes, so there's a um, related related sort of a thing to that. Essentially, our eye, uh, um, whenever I'm as a main design principle, sure. things look designed if they look deliberate. Mm. If they look like this is this color is definitely different to this color. Like mm -hmm. if you have orange and yellow, they're mm -hmm. definitely meant to be different. So Correct. it looks like you've done it on purpose. Mm -hmm. that, so that's kind of the if you look at something. Um, to me, design means. If someone looks at something and they say, oh, someone's made a choice to do that. And it looks sure, like yeah, they've done yeah. it done yeah. And for me, the way, the, the main, main, a major way to do that is to make things, either things are exactly the same mm -hmm. or they're very noticeably different. Yeah. Uh, where yeah. you get into, if you have like 20% gray next to a 30% gray, <laughs> then it, um, you may have done it intentionally, but to sure. someone else, it looks like you've got it wrong. Looks like you've got oh that's that's that looks like they've tried to use that gray and it's a bit and it's they've they've, they've messed it up. Right. Um, so if you, if things can look deliberate, um, clearly the same or clearly um, clearly different to each other, uh, then it looks designed. Um, right. uh, if you've got yeah, um, I think that's yeah same same with sizes of things. As I said, sizes of boxes, sizes of fonts, um, and one way to do that is make is but certainly with size. Right. is make things noticeably bigger or noticeably smaller. Mm. Um, so yeah, if uh, go up two or three font sizes between things, if you've got a heading and a, and a body text in a, in a diagram or something, make the heading um, uh, at least like 14 point versus mm -hmm. 11 point, something like that. If it's 13 and 14, then it looks like, it just looks a bit off. It looks like right, you haven't right. tried, you've, got, you've got something wrong or anything like that. So, um, yeah, and if you've got an art background, right. then use your own sort of eye, eye for color and eye for spacing and stuff like that. Using grid, using um, uh, there are plenty of resources out there for for uh, to help you with layouts in terms of grid grid lines and how to yeah, so yeah. how to you know, our pages and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'll definitely use those sort of resources because they're they're sort of basic design principles that will make things look look um, aesthetically pleasing. Um, right. So yeah, yeah, I would I would say. Um, practice a lot if you're, um, and also use the resources that are out there because there's, there's plenty of um, YouTube tutorials. Yeah, and things nowadays, like that. yeah, nowadays you can find lots of stuff online yes. to learn from. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, certainly from the technical aspect. Um, I guess for me, there's the it's the design, the art aspect is one part, and then the technical aspect is another part. So, right. knowing how or knowing how to visually um, make things look nice mm -hmm. is is um is one thing in terms of colors and shape and size and stuff sure, like that. Sure, sure. But then knowing the technicals of the program, technicalities of the programs that you're using, mm -hmm. um, those things definitely go go find a YouTube tutorial. There's there's plenty of free ones out there uh, for your specific program. And within an hour, you'll you'll know the basics of that program. And sure, that's just yeah. a matter of fact. Yeah. Yeah. And even even in addition to the free ones, nowadays lots of websites are offering courses from professionals at a relatively cheaper price, actually. So oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> nowadays there's a lots and lots of resources. If someone yes. wants to learn, yes. you can yes. definitely, yeah. Yes, yeah. As there's yes, you're right. There's lots of lots of well-made professional um, mm -hmm. uh, paid courses out there. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So you touched upon that dimorphism, like uh, art and also the content of it like the um, technicalities of it and also the scientific content of the illustration so mm -hmm. how has in your experience um so i reckon like you must be working for different types of clients so uh drawing in different styles for example uh, one example could be for example drawing for a cover art of a journal it's more on the artistic side instead of being on the more technical side like exact processes that are that the image is depicting but an illustration inside the paper or in a textbook that's more of educational or more of conveying the data so how do these different kinds of illustrations vary and how do you shift like do you set your mind in a certain frame of mind like while doing a certain project like how does that happen 
Uh, yes, great question. Um, it, yes, they can be quite different. Right. Um, and I think the for me, one of the questions I like to ask any client to start off with is, is what's the main idea behind this this image? Mm, like, like, what do you want it to convey? Like, what what their what's the, vision? What, what's the point? Yeah, mm. what's the what's the main point of this image? Is it to give people a nice feeling when they look at it? Is it, <laughs> yeah. to, is it to yeah? Because that's that's a it can be that's valid. That's a valid thing. Like, if it's a if it's a cover, we want people to feel calm, or they want people to pick it up from the news agent stand, sure. or yeah. things like that. And right through to oh, we want to we want to tell we want to. Um, inform people about this chemical reaction and how it's slightly right, right. slightly more efficient than this chemical reaction um uh for example and so basically getting to the core of what the what the core message of what the image is right. um is goes a long way to getting you in the right mindset and so yeah and you're right it's it's a it's it's sort of a gradation between uh, very technical and towards the the art side of things um and so yeah more design um so when yeah when you're working towards the more art side of things then yeah it's all it's it's about um the, about the feeling and, and the visuals and that sort of stuff they're, they're very important still a lot a lot of times with those um artistic uh like a painting or a three right. or a, um, a computer generated image for a cover or something there's still a lot of considerations design wise Sure. as to where the title's going to go so it can't be too busy in that area of the image and things like that or that there are they do have their own sort of um technical limitations as well um which is um a funny thing to think about uh but uh yeah so uh helps to be able to switch between that artistic mindset and mm -hmm. to like oh, this is going to be five millimeters away from this and then five right, millimeters right. away from that and that's got to be um uh have this sort of scale and that kind of stuff so it's, uh, yeah also like you touched upon earlier actually knowing uh, what the size restriction is and uh, what the other fonts and other restriction is knowing beforehand it's absolutely crucial while designing the certain images oh uh, um, yes yeah yeah uh, almost because they will be there in almost all the situations right so we have to know that exactly yeah yes yeah exactly yeah. right yeah it's a uh, sorry to talk over you there yeah you're exactly right um that's a great thing to nail down at the start. And that's that's probably a thing that I would say to beginners as well. That's a thing to yeah. watch out for, mm -hmm. um, is to ask those questions early on. Um, okay. And because oftentimes a scientist, that you don't know those questions because you're you're thinking about your ideas, which is which is valid. This is your your specialty. Um, and you're like, I've got my great idea about this diagram, I want to have this <laughs> and then that, and then the floats yeah. showing that this is happening. Um, and it's it's very easy to get caught up in that and then go off and make something and then and I say oh no it's actually I've got a whole lot more text needs to go in or it's actually going to be shrunk down or it's only going to be shrunk, going to be made larger so right. asking those questions early on is a is a is a very good uh, if I had any if I had another a, another tip for beginners that would be something to to ask at the beginning and, um, yeah because it's it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle oftentimes mm -hmm. because yeah. everyone tries to. Um, uh, fit as much stuff as they can into these diagrams sometimes. Oh, yeah, right. So, um, sometimes yeah, so that could thing. work. Sometimes um, I've seen like some images, like lot, lots of stuff is going on in the image and sometimes that works. But often I find that uh, having a more plain image, like more clean image is sometimes more uh, to the point of the purpose you are actually drawing it for, like conveying the information. So, yeah. yes, exactly. Yeah, that's, uh, um, you're exactly right. Cause, and that's a, that's another, they're all sort of um, spectrums, I guess. There's, yeah, there's yeah. all sort of points on the spectrum where you can, sure. for any any illustration, um, and realism getting to be like almost photorealistic image works is needed sometimes, right, right through to very very stylized things, uh, almost like a logo level of stylization. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, so that's needed sometimes. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and um, I I wonder like. Uh, you must be communicating with lots of people, like uh, different clients, and uh, so so you must be interacting with various different kinds of temperaments of people. Um, some people may be very clear or very very direct communication, like what they want, and some people, like you said, might not actually be knowing what they actually want, and you have to extract the information. And sometimes it must be uh, getting quite um, uh, what's the right word here confusing or sometimes irritating even i wonder yeah uh, frustrating i think yeah frustrating it's, yeah it's frustrating. never never, never really irritating <laughs> um yeah it's, it's it's best not to get irritated right people. right but, but uh I, from, I find it as a professional level but yeah it certainly can be frustrating sometimes sure, sure, and it, sure. you're right when you're dealing with a new new customers um 
everyone has their own uh, different communication Idea. style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and some people are very, very particular. They say, I want this, this level of font and this color and, and, and it has to have these things. And other people, um, and they're, they're often easier to deal with sometimes. Oh, excuse yeah. me. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, but at other times a uh, client will say, I oh, just do whatever you like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're, you're the artist, to, um, you, you decide, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that can be, uh, that's where asking questions uh, can come in, come in handy. So, okay. so, yeah, uh, I actually wanted to know like in which kind of situation do you feel more comfortable um, knowing exactly every detail or the client giving you more flexibility in pursuing your artistic endeavor so th that is something very interesting that I wanted to ask from uh, people like you, like who do illustrations and other stuff. Like in, in which kind of situation do you feel more comfortable? Um, probably somewhere in the middle. Um, mm, okay. uh, often um, it's good. It's really good to know mm. people's technical requirements uh, right. as, um, in terms of what they mm -hmm. really want uh, to have, what they feel is essential to the diagram. Um, it's really good to know that early on because it um, sometimes happens that um, halfway through making a diagram and someone's like, oh, um, can you add this thing in as well? Uh, we yeah. need to, we need to, it's not quite right. We need to, we need to add in this, uh, um, we need to cover this part of the uh, research sure, sure. as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that can be difficult to incorporate, not impossible, um, it's, but it's easier if those things happen early on. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just part of the process sometimes as well. So, um, so yeah, knowing, uh, having a, Having clear guidelines at the start is, is very good, um, but then having the um, not being micromanaged as you go yeah, along yeah. Is, is better as well. Because um, not through um, because that's a that's a bad thing to have. It's, it's really good to to analyze things and want to want to make the most out of them and try, sure, and sure. try to tweak things and stuff like that. Um, but from from where I'm sitting. Um, Sometimes that can mess up the design overall design. Like I'm going for an overall design, and it's got to have a bit of space in there, so to balance out this this um, mm -hmm. uh, it has to have a light area there to dark out this to, to balance out this dark area here. Um, and then if someone comes in, if 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 someone says, "Oh, let's put some text in there," because there's a blank space, so I'll put something in it, yeah. and, it's, and it can throw off the the design um, uh, um, my my initial sort of design ideas to start with. But at the end of the day, it's, the, it's whether the client's happy with it, um, and and my my personal views on on whether or not something looks fantastic uh, take have to always have to take backseat to um to what the the client wants, and I can certainly make suggestions and, and about things. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so so somewhere in the middle is, is good. Somewhere in the middle, sure. someone has a clear idea of what they want, uh, but are happy um, for me to make a lot of decisions mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you very much for such an open discussion. Like, um, it's great to actually, okay. yeah, it's great to actually look into your world because, uh, because most of the times I do not get the opportunity to talk to illustrators and others. So uh, it's a very uh, interesting for me from my perspective to look into your world. And um, yeah, so uh, are, do you have any illustrations that you can share with us through screen share or uh, right now, like? Um, yeah, I've got some on my on my website at the moment, I suppose. Um, mm -hmm. uh, because I, I wonder, like, although I'm going to link your description and website under the video, but maybe some of our viewers might be interested in seeing some of your illustrations right now, or maybe you can actually touch upon how, like, the background, like how that illustration was developed and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I can um, I can have a look at some of the ones on my on my website right. actually, if that's a, if, yeah. Um, sure. Talk about those, and uh, let me just try and find uh, share my screen. Yeah, um, uh, I'm not able to share my screen. Oh, really? Mm. Okay, let me see if I have to. Uh, multiple parts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you check it? Uh, check it now. Oh, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. okay. Uh, let me see. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Sharing. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is my my website. Um, talk to me, I guess. Um, so yeah, this is a good idea of all the different types of uh well, services. Hey, can you done. like um? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yep. Is okay, can you share the screen again? Because I think. 
because oh. I'm I'm seeing something else right now. Okay. Like, oh, is that my my screen? Sorry, I've, I've moved things over. Okay. Yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah. Better. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I've got two screens. Yeah. yeah okay. Sorry for my personal thing there for a second there. Um. Uh. Let's see. Uh. Right. So. So. Um. Yes, this is a good idea of, of the range of things that I that I do. Mm. Um, oh yeah, through, I, I like this turtle versus tortoise. <laughs> nice. Uh, yes, that was a yeah. that was a. I did a um a whole month of of doing uh infographics, just made, right. just just my own personal sort of thing, mm -hmm. and that's one that like that that sort of showed up that worked out quite nicely. And right. this is a good example of yeah, this shows a lot of principles actually. Right. Um, so symmetry, um, sort of uh, from the left and right. Uh, there um, to the left and right of the image. Um, very simplified. I basically tried to, this is one of the diagrams where I basically tried to make it um, as simplified as possible, but still, but still um, have enough information, information there yeah. to be, to, 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 uh, yeah, enough information to make things. Um, oh, and one, one thing I'm finding very interesting in this one is the turtles' uh, legs are much more longer than the tortoises. So that is something a uh, nice detail. Thanks. Yeah. So it's um. So yeah. To to do this, I basically had a look at a whole bunch of um. Mm -hmm. Um. I can't remember where the initial idea came from, but I, yeah. I just had a look at around at a few uh -huh. um general pictures of of of, of turtles and tortoises. Um, and sort of found that this sort of general there must have been a a, a website somewhere that that had sure, sure, these sort yeah. of pictures i think um from, from a few different sources so i don't think it was um mm -hmm. there's not any one place i got this from a lot of times just just looking around generally at, at a particular topic mm -hmm. uh, is where to get ideas from mm -hmm. and they sort of pop out at you from oh we'll use this use this idea from here this idea from here sure um, and can put it all together um, certainly, if this was a if this was a professional job and it was for a paper or something, I would certainly reference. Um, right. If there was anything to reference that I that I used scientifically, um, yeah, this is more of a yeah, just a personal project to sort of play around with the design and sort of things like that. Sure. Uh, so yeah, so so getting things sort of um, to look iconic um, and recognizable. Uh, this, that was the idea behind this one. Um, and yeah, I think it's there's there's been studies that say that we. Um, our minds, our brains process um, images a lot faster than they process text. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so anything that you can visually um, portray mm. just makes it jump out at you a lot quicker. Um, and uh, so yeah, yeah exactly. I'm quite happy with this one. This so, so yeah, so so in terms of um, yeah symmetry, spacing, mm. in terms of uh, these are all in exactly the same. Space. Yeah, it looks so, very clean, uh, like uh, well organized and very clean, not clustered. So. That's something very. Uh, nice. Thanks. Yeah. So this is more. This is yeah. More, more towards the design end of things, in terms of um, the information. Information doesn't take take a back seat, but it's right, it's right. been it's been um, simplified down so that it's, um, yeah, it's uh, it's just enough, just enough information in there, right? Visually to sort of um, to sort of uh, get the idea across. Um, and that one, as opposed to this, this is this is another infographic that I did that month. Right. Um, so this one, it's more. Sort of a standard uh, vector graphic illustration of like a, of a Bunsen burner. And this one's got a bit. This one's more towards a scientific diagram, sort of a um, right. level of detail where you've got sort of uh, things that are uh, labelled yeah. um, with the text. Uh, these different font sizes. That's more of a. This is more of what would be on a poster, perhaps. Um, oh, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So a bit more. Uh, if this was if this was for a paper, it would certainly mm -hmm. those those. Uh, fonts would all be the same. Also, size. you convey this information very um, uh, clearly, like the air hole size and how does that, like, like on the left side, how does the air hole size control the type of flame? So that information is visually conveyed very well. So, mm, very nice. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So, that's uh, um, yeah, another example of trying to, so a uh, fair bit of work goes into um, essentially keeping up, like, Mm -hmm. In terms of design tips as well for for people sure. wanting to do something like this, mm -hmm. um, all I've make sure these are all, all these these squares are all lined up perfectly, same amount of space in between each one. Yeah, these are all yeah. the same size, things like that. It'd be easy to just draw one and then draw it again, and so draw another one again, and mm -hmm. um, have it almost exactly the same size, but a little yeah. bit off. And and um, whereas I've I've basically did, uh, drawn this once. And then duplicated it three times, yeah. And then and then worked on each of those duplicates, so they're all exactly the same. Um, mm -hmm. Things like that. So, 
Uh, that's a little tip to duplicating things, drawing things once. And if they're going to be slight variations on an, on an image, um, then, send, then draw it once and then duplicate it. Uh, I also, and then yeah, I also often do that, yeah, <laughs> to maintain the sizes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great way to get to keep yeah. things um, consistent. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that's another one. All right, back to here. So this this is a more recent um, scientific illustration that I, that I did for some scientists. Um, right. Uh, here in Perth, Perth, uh, Vanessa mm -hmm. Brown, um, and yeah, this is this is in the field of seeds, mm -hmm. um, and uh, something I uh, one thing that I, that I've learned that's I've picked up over the years a lot of science from talking to lots of scientists. <laughs> Um, yeah. And um, got uh, best got to know a lot of science as I, uh -huh. as I go. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, yes, this is another uh, connection because my my wife's actually a scientist as well, so that's a oh, really? that's a big help in terms of um, in terms of networking and everything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's sure. that's certainly she knows lots of scientists, and I know lots of scientists <laughs> from um, just through, yeah. through personal uh, connections and things like uh -huh. that. So that that's always a big um, networking um, uh, opportunity sure. as well. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, so this was a scientist that I. Oh wow! Uh, so they are like coating chili, and you describe the chili with the red color, and yeah, that's very interesting. So yeah, this this was a this was a really fun one. This this image, because uh, uh, I basically sat down with the with the scientists, a group of three three of the authors. Mm -hmm. um, we had a really good like an hour long conversation about all of the mm -hmm. of them explaining what this process was. Right. Uh, and so this this section down the bottom is the is the new uh, is there the new ideas. So, so in terms of um, collection, processing and storage, they're all the, um, in terms of this field of science, they're the things that everybody knows, everybody does. Um, so, so for that reason, they're a lot smaller on the page and they're a lot yeah. more stylized. So awesome. this is all, this, so um, oftentimes when creating a diagram, um, it's good to know the visual language that, that, the, that the audience already knows. Mm -hmm. um, and so in this instance, it's seed, it's science, seed scientists. Mm -hmm. And so this is common knowledge to them, these three, these first three circles, oh, collection, processing and storage. So for them, that's, everybody knows that, everybody so knows you, that. So you do not need problem. to focus on them too much. So that's why their sizes are relatively smaller, but the lower portion is the new one, new technology. So that is much more highlighted. Correct, correct. Uh, and so it's, it's conversations like that that happen at the start of, mm -hmm. of, of, of projects. Um, and that, that enable you to focus in on what's more important. Yeah. So the either the new thing or the unusual thing uh, is often given the most importance in a diagram like, like this. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. So so this poem got it got quite a couple of complex because it was um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah four different uh, post harvest treatments they called. Um, and so the, with it, and within it, within each process, there's a sort of a before and after effect uh, with these. So mm -hmm. this one. Um, uh, yes. Sorry. I, I think these are all vector graphics, right? All vector graphics, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mainly work in um, in two uh, D vector graphics. Mm -hmm. um, that's my yeah. main. So all the ones we've seen so far, they've all been created in Illustrator. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I've had many years of. I mainly use Illustrator now, uh, but right. I've had many years working with Corel Draw as well, mm -hmm. uh, which is another vector. vector yeah, for two D vectors, um, I generally use Inkscape because it's open access. For oh yes, yeah. Exactly the same process, um, yeah, yeah. exactly the same concept, and yeah, the main the main differences between something like Illustrator and something like Inkscape is just the the, the controls are slightly in slightly different places, the, the menus are slightly different, um, right, right. and they're, they're, they're essentially the same sort of program. Um, it's just the uh, yes, it's just the um, where everything is and all the all the tools and things like that. Um, you can switch between right. the two between Illustrator. Right. If you if you learn the concepts on something like Inkscape and then want to move it on to something like Illustrator later on, uh, that's definitely a way to go. Sure, uh, it's just, there'll just be a little bit of a teething, little bit, little bit of a shift um, where you reach for one tool and it's and it's in right. a different spot. Uh, like like we talked about earlier, actually, uh, while I was watching these tutorial videos while learning Inkscape. So the uh, the uh, teacher was saying that it's it's the artist that actually defines the image and it's not the software most softwares have almost the same tools but you just have to learn your way around them so yep exactly right exactly <laughs> right um yes no i would definitely agree with that mm -hmm. it's it's just a um switching between like all different types of pencils or different sure, types yeah, of yeah. Stuff. and yeah mm -hmm. it's uh it's just getting getting used to you can change between the two all the same concepts are all the concepts are the same yeah. um and yeah so even um 
if you really wanted to, you could probably create something like this in PowerPoint as well. If you wanted to, if you yeah. knew PowerPoint super, super well, super uh, well there's, yeah. certain, there's certain <laughs> things like that you couldn't do in terms of some of the gradients and stuff like that. Gradients. Some of the technical aspects yeah. you probably couldn't do in, in, um, in something like PowerPoint. Sure. But if that's all you not, if that if you know that super well, if you've been using PowerPoint for 10 years and, and you mm -hmm. can just do things up like the back of your hand, then I would recommend using that um, sort of uh, uh, to do, um, to do diagrams sure. um certainly if you didn't want to spend the time to learn new programs um if you're right. you're busy and you and you just want to clean up a diagram mm -hmm. uh for a paper that you're putting out um yeah it's totally legitimate to use something like powerpoint because i've seen people do some great things in powerpoint, in PowerPoint. Right. Um, as you said it's not the tool it's not the it's the artist not the tools that, that yes, makes it yeah. rich. um so yes yeah, so this one this one was a lot of fun to do um yeah uh, I really a lot like of back and forth yeah. sorry yep yep yeah, I really like this one. Yeah, it's actually I'm happy with that because it it has text as well as you know the um, uh, the representation of the process going on is very interesting and also the mouse is very cute. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's a yeah, it's a it's a um, this Rodent. is a really good example of of a standard sort of a scientific diagram for, yeah, that yeah. I would do. Mm -hmm. um, sort of uh, a good balance of text and images, not too much of either. Uh, because otherwise it's you yeah. start losing information either way yeah i, I reckon so, like if you add more stuff to it it will become more clustered so yeah, yeah exactly yeah even if it was up to me i would probably mm -hmm. um have a bit more uh open space in between things sure this is one of those um ones that was very constrained by font sizes and um and the overall size of the image it needed to be and things like that mm -hmm. um so yeah, if it was up to me. I would I would sort of make do things like make the margin <laughs> slightly bigger and stuff like that. This is just my designer um, right. hat, my designer hat on. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, the client was happy with it, and it went onto their um, onto their paper that they put out uh, earlier in the nice. earlier in the year. So it's, um, yeah, published. So that's uh, it was a success, um, and they they were happy. So that's that's the main yeah, thing. And that's the main thing. Um, yeah, uh, another another version, another. Um, Diagram here, which is hard to see on the full page. I'm quite happy with how this one turned out. Uh, this was actually um, from one of my wife's old papers. She had a she had a um, uh, she was studying um, soil texture um, in um, yeah, certain just, area. Just by looking at the just by looking at the image, I could tell that it is to do with the land or soil or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was. So she had basically these graphs. These three graphs. Yeah. of soil texture soil and they were just labeled with a b c and a b c and things like that mm. um, and so i thought oh as a, as a um there's a bit of practice um but how can i how can i make this a bit more mm -hmm. um visually impactful and a bit easier to read um and so essentially these were the three there were three different pits there were essentially um mine side rehabilitation where they basically dug dug up dirt to build parts of the parts of the mine site Sure. And they were left with these big holes in the ground. Ah, so it's it part of the part of mine, mine recognition. Yeah, mine, mine site rehabilitation. Yeah. And so the I uh, so the, um in order to put plants back in, mm -hmm. they examined the soil texture um right. in those in those pits. Mm -hmm. And so there was three locations where they um mm -hmm. as you can see, there's three locations where they they tested the soil texture in sort of three different um diff, three different pits mm -hmm. and then three different locations within each pit. Right. Um one area that was just the bottom of the pit, an unripped area. One was ripped, basically um, had mm -hmm. uh, horticultural um, almost uh, the tools have like been plow. Them. Yeah, tools to sort of plow for to to, um, to plow for fields. Right. Uh, so they were they were ripped in that, putting furrows in the ground, mm -hmm. um, and then then they compared that with the areas of natural vegetation mm -hmm. uh, nearby. Um, and so yeah, so I was just had to play around with that to. Um, basically expand it out, make it a bit more visually um, impactful. So you can immediately see, oh, that's the um, that's the ripped the soil texture for that area. That's the soil texture for, for that area. And it's the soil mm -hmm. texture for that area. Um, and there we've got the key with the, the soil textures there. So initially, you, um, this was all very black and white and there was just A, B, C and the, or ripped. Yeah. But actually, they actually, I think it was actually labeled on the, on the diagram. Um, yeah. So it was a graph with just labels, um, and I replaced those labels with an image and the iconic representation of those different areas. Yeah, in this one, uh, I so think yeah. like adding the the small um, illustrations of the different types of this um, soil texture, like the coarse and 
a raped, unraped, and the natural vegetation. This adds much more like visual appeal to it. I think the readers would be uh, more captured into reading, like reading the graph. Like uh, if, if it was like in the traditional setup of science papers, like only different patterns and just naming ABC instead of this visual illustration, that would be more um, less exciting. This is much yes, more- Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, yes, that was that was the idea. It was sort of to, so I'm glad to hear that that that's <laughs> yeah. that effect. Yeah. So it's and it's and another thing that, that for me another good another um, very um, important benefit of of having uh, of graph of of illustrations and graphics in in science yeah. is that um, it's it's very easy to it's very cross cultural. Like for um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you get a lot across with not much text in there. Mm. So it would definitely help in um, people who who um, are not uh, don't know the language that the paper was written in, for example. Sure, yeah. uh, it can be very international. Yeah, the the more you can uh, remove text from an image, mm -hmm. the more accessible it is. Uh, certainly yeah. accessible to people, and um, it's sort of it's it, right. It's sort of the idea jumps uh, for me. Trying to get the idea to jump out at you straight away, rather yeah. than have you having to find it. Because uh, a lot of a lot of graphs and things, they're they're great. They've got a lot of data. They're, they're they're technically showing everything you need to know, but you really need to study them to 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 find the data in there. You're like, okay, there's this awesome image and a graph. Like, okay, let me yeah. let me read everything for five minutes to figure out what it is. Yeah, yeah it's almost like right. to study the, the diagram. For yeah. me, a diagram needs to show you, uh -huh. not it shouldn't be something that needs to be studied too much. It should be it does all the work for it does the work for you to explain right. it. It's sort of the bridge between the the author of the paper and the and the reader, right. um, so helping communicate those, those ideas, yeah, as, mm -hmm. um, as much as they can, rather than um, having the reader have to do a lot of work to sort of decipher things. Yeah. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah. So those two are the ones that I I quite like, and uh, these two here, these are more uh, more sort of graphic design mm. end of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so conference posters, for oh, example, or like a poster. Um, yeah. Yeah, so this is like a conference poster I did mm. um, where looking at these things now, I, I may change. <laughs> My design mind is trying to change, is trying to edit things. <laughs> uh, but yeah, having it, having things laid out with columns is always a great thing to do. Right. Uh, things that most, most people know with, with posters are. But yeah, just getting the... Um, Posters generally have like more um, this kind of uh, textual information, like you need to read, like generally what happens is the poster is presented in a conference, for example, and people walk up to the poster and then read all this closely. And posters generally people who do not know, like it's printed in a much larger size. So people can yes. e easily read all the text and everything when it's actually oh, yes. presented. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Great, great point. Yeah, this, right, right. this image here would have been expanded. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's very different. Um, yeah, back to the the my um, point before of yeah, knowing what size it's going to be when it's when it's looked at right, right. the end product. Uh, yeah, so this is the text. And is also, I think that's one of the critical advantages of doing this vector art because you can actually scale it in any size you want without any pixel pixel effect. So yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah, that's the that's the, yeah. You you hit the nail on the head with the right, difference right. between vector vector programs and things something like Photoshop. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, uh, essentially, yeah, with things like Photoshop, the pixels, mm -hmm. the number of pixels are set at the beginning when you yes. open the file. Yeah, the pixels are set. Whereas, a uh, with a vector program, it's all it's all computer um, mm -hmm. computer modeling of the. Uh, sort of vector. formulas it's vector all the vector um, uh, formulas of the where the points are yes. and the bitmap image only is created at the end yeah mm -hmm. um, so yeah it can be scaled to any size without losing any any detail at all right uh, exactly right uh, of but one thing to note though when you are using um because this is this is a good example of a combination of using photographs in a vector image which is yeah. which is um yeah, which is yeah. a great visual right. impact thing to do uh, but one thing you really need to, to watch out with those is mm -hmm. that the images are large enough. The, the, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because they be do not scale. Up. Yeah, because they are not right. vectors, so they do not scale. Exactly right. So it's, a, it's a great point. Yeah. Um, yes, exactly right. Uh, so yeah, it can, it can totally ruin a design if you mm -hmm. go, oh, I'm going to make this thing that can be scaled up to be a poster size, <laughs> and then you have this horrible pixelated, yeah. uh, one of these pictures just wasn't good enough right. quality. Uh -huh. so mm -hmm. um, 
So yeah, and uh, oh, this was a, 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 a back to another cover. This was a cover layout for a, a draft report that I that I um, helped on for the a government report last year. Um, and yeah, this is more certainly more image heavy. Um, right, right. So yeah, this is, this is um, uh, an example of, of that. Uh, more graphic, more with the graphic design end of things. Um, yeah, but that still conveys the information, like it's Western Australia, so you can actually see that area. Yes. That is yeah, yeah. The shape of Western Australia. So, <laughs> yeah. Nice. It's got to be information in there, and yes, it's um, yeah. <laughs> in there too. And uh, oh, yeah, same, same. This is a uh, logo that I've done recently in mm -hmm. the conference coming up, um, an Australian conference. Oh, and okay. um, mm -hmm. this is again being quite stylized, but based on a, based on a particular seed and the flowers and leaves, leaf shape of a particular native, a plant right. native to that area that the conference is being held. So, mm. uh, and uh, nice. oh, yeah, and uh, oh, and, and another. I also do a bit of fine arts that isn't isn't um computer oh, yeah. related. Or it's more these, like these uh, mm, watercolor, mm. Uh, watercolor, um, and ink images of mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so do you draw that using a? Uh, a digital pen or um no this this was uh with a sort of fine line pen so just a mm -hmm. okay okay the regular sort of um black sort of art line ink sort of pen mm -hmm. um and yeah and combined with watercolors and then scanned in and and, ah, and still there's still a layout there's still um all the it's been put into a layout in illustrator uh with all the the background and the circles and everything like that so right. you couldn't draw circles that nicely freehand, but um, make it more yeah. presentable and more informative. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. and this is just more an art piece rather than a. Uh, could be used as a as an as a oh. design for a poster or an illustration, uh, but this is just a just a bit of fun, really. Just a, <laughs> yeah. So this this yeah, is more yeah. something I do in my spare time, which could could cross over into into work stuff. Right. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, that's probably a good cross section of of. Mm -hmm. What I can do if you want to. Oh, is, that, is that a kookaburra down the page? Uh, oh, yes, yeah. Oh. So that's a, that's <laughs> a kookaburra, yeah. This is more I, of a sort <laughs> of coloring in page, this section here. So a bilby and a kookaburra. Um, you know, I, I could tell yeah. that that was a kookaburra just by looking at the head. So that, that says many things, right? Because your illustrations <laughs> are so on the point. Thanks. Thank you. Very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much for sharing, Craig. It's, uh, That's okay. Yeah, very interesting to see. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Bit of a stroll through my website there. But, sure. Um, yeah. It's yeah. So that's a. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. You're saying something. Um, so yeah. So that's a. That's a. In terms of. Um, yeah. In terms of what I could, what I. Uh, do in terms of a job. Yeah. Anything through from the scientific illustration side of things to infographics. Right. even to the page layout for, for, um, for posters. So being, okay. being from my, like, I'm in the active research side of science. So from that side, uh, actually my two favorite images were the one, uh, the mind reclamation soil graph and the oh, one yes. and the seed one. So those, those were like what I would also show in papers. Uh, basically, yes. yeah. yeah. So those were more interesting for me. Mm. Thanks. Yeah, that's that's um, that's where the majority of my work. Would be, yeah, yeah, things like that. Mm -hmm. It's just it's science. That's my my um main focus is yeah scientific illustrations for papers and things like that. So, anyway, great. That, that first one's actually used as a visual abstract as well. The seed yeah, one, yeah. we mm -hmm. use that as a visual abstract. Yeah, that could more um, be like an abstract or um for educational purposes. Like many times, you have to make images, illustrations for textbooks and maybe high school science books and stuff like that. So mm. yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, Craig, for sharing all these um, beautiful illustrations and uh, right. for talking to me for so long. Like we have been talking for more than an hour now. So <laughs> very nice. Sorry. Yeah, it, it's all right. It's perfectly. Thanks for giving me your time to like explain everything and talk to me. So that's uh, I really appreciate it. And um, mm -hmm. so we have been talking about lots of serious stuff. And before ending the conversation, let's like talk about some soft stuff. <laughs> Basically, I wanted to know. 
like how important like you like you also showed your watercolor mushrooms and stuff like what you'd like to do in your free time and stuff like that so how important is it to have like hobbies and interests beyond our immediate uh, work because <clears throat> many times i see people getting burned out uh, particularly in um, research particularly in academic research people are always like in their lab uh, doing stuff and things like that so they may get burned out so how important is it to have like hobbies and interests beyond our work how important is it to rest and how important our uh, role does the family play in it like families and friends and things like that yeah um I, yes i think it's very important to mm -hmm. to yeah. have a balance um and that balance can be different for for, for, for sure. every person they have their own uh, level of what what balance means and they might yeah. be quite happy just working 10 hour days or 12 hour days and, and that's perfectly fine for them um so first thing i would start out with is was find out what's the right balance for you and and yeah, yeah. um and certainly certainly take advice from people but um don't uh feel like you need to need to follow what other, someone else says that oh you need to do this or you need to do that um also, certainly like, uh, one can try that out like whatever suggestions they receive they can try mm -hmm. that out and whether that works for you or not but at the end of the day they have to find their own way so Exactly. Yeah. So it's, uh, it is find, finding that balance is very important, I, I yeah. think. And yeah, hobbies and, and other interests outside of work, are, uh, for me, are definitely a big part of it. Um, yeah. uh, I have uh, certainly um, struggled with with anxiety and depression mm -hmm. type issues in, in the past before. And I always find that, yeah, um, family and friends, um, keeping in contact with them is, is very important. Mm -hmm. um, and also, yeah, having hobbies, for me in particular, having hobbies where you can focus on things. Um, so I, I like I like creative hobbies um, where I'm where I'm focusing on on creating something, um, and I find that it's very like mindful. It's very it's very like much like mindfulness where I, any worries or thoughts sort of um, they they I can't don't think about it. And they just leave right. my mind because I'm focused on drawing that little picture or or, or things like that. So um, so yeah, any anything that's um, or whether that's coloring in or it doesn't have to be. Um, you don't have to be an artist to, to in order to do things like that. Sure. So it could yeah. be could be crafts, or it could be knitting, or it could be it could many be anything. times. Yeah, many times art and um, painting and drawing can be very much healing. Like I, I've known people who like uh, are, are not artists, or perhaps they can, they cannot even like sketch perfectly good circles or stuff like that. But they enjoy coloring and drawing something, or just uh, being involved in practicing something that takes their mind off of their immediate uh, work or other stuff. So I think that's very important. Yes, yeah, yeah, I do think, I really, really believe that. And um, and it's the kind of thing that can be, you can do it in little short bursts as well. Like you can, um, it doesn't have to take away from your time, your productive time very much, even just five minutes here or there. I think, oh, this is getting a little bit overwhelming. I'm getting a bit, yeah. Um, uh, it's all too much. I'll just go walk, step outside, with my sketchbook for five minutes and draw sure. a leaf or a tree or something um just focus on that try to get and then um then sort of it's very refreshing and come back come back to you um, yeah it, task it could be anything for people like it could be a reading a book or uh going for a walk or uh, perhaps uh, uh going meeting a friend or having a coffee anything yeah <laughs> yeah exactly and uh yeah and um hobbies that involve other people are great as well They're, they sort of sort of um cover a lot of lot of uh, benefits at the same time um, and so yeah if you're in like a sporting group or or um, or certainly there's groups of people that go do crafting things together and they um and that can even be online as well there's lots of um, uh, nowadays where where yeah, nowadays, yeah. things aren't, uh, aren't yeah. as easy um, yeah there's, there's big communities out there um, so if you've got an interest um, there's certainly a community out there if they're willing to and they'll they Creative people are usually very welcoming. Um, mm. So, if you're brand new to this, or brand new to the the whatever the the um, pursuit is, or brand right, new right. to the group, um, yeah, they'll they'll usually be welcoming and, and uh, mm. uh, yeah, have a community there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hobbies definitely definitely are a big. Also, a big, uh -huh. big thing. right, right. And also, I read in your uh, Twitter bio that uh, you like to sing. So how important is uh, singing and music in your life? Uh, nowadays, uh, actually, I'm listening to one Australian artist. You must like Delta Goodrum. See, he's quite famous, actually. Uh, yeah, no, I know Delta Goodrum. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah so, pretty famous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
I'm actually uh, loving her songs nowadays. Like I'm listening to many of her songs. I, she's actually quite famous, and she's also on The Voice, I think. So yeah. anyway, so yes, how, yeah, right, yeah. how important is it? Uh, like, what role does music or singing play in your life? Okay, um, that's a great question. But and uh, for me, it's for me, it's a lot. There's a there's a there's a it's such a big role. I think, um, yeah, and it's true. hard for me. It's such an it integrated part of my life it's it's probably um something difficult to explain um first first of all i sing in a choir um and i oh. they rehearse we rehearse once a week um that's we're lucky to be in perth that way for la- all of last year all choir rehearsals were cancelled um for obvious reasons it's a very high risk everyone like high risk um at, at the moment high risk uh, thing to do um everyone breathing yeah, all over each other and singing and stuff like that um but uh Yes, so uh, but we we're very lucky to for this year that we're in here in Perth in Western Australia. We were lucky enough to to be able to go back to um, uh, uh, having choir rehearsals. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, so yeah, so I've been singing in this particular choir for about twenty years, mm-hmm. um, and uh, so uh, ages me a bit there. Um, but uh, it's it's just refreshing it's just it's a it's a it's like a, it's almost like a team sport you sort of you're mm. you're using your breath a lot you're um you're doing things in in teamwork because you're all in your sections and there's the there's the sopranos and the altos and the tenors in the bass section um and so you're with your core core group of people and you're trying to get their section right you're you're part of the music right um and it's a lot so it's challenging it's a it's a um it's a team sort of uh uh it's it's like um, a community community working together and it's like a group exactly yeah it's it's yeah it's just covers so many things that i would i cannot if you're in any way mm-hmm. got singing ability then i would definitely recommend joining a choir when, when once they start opening up again it's a right it's got mm-hmm. so many benefits um the, the major major life benefit for me was that's how i met my wife because we were both oh. singing in the choir <laughs> nice. um and for any guys out single guys out there that's a, that's a great <laughs> Guy to girl ratio in choirs, so that's a that's a big tip. Um, right, right. So it's a great way to meet to meet um, uh, girls if you if, if that's what you're what you're um, something you like in your life. Yeah. Um, yes, something you're looking for. Um, and uh, yeah, so it was a because you you're with a group of people that are all have a, she had common interests and they're all um, like minded people and it's um so it's great social social um social. So, uh, is it doing, now? Yeah. Is it now something of a family thing that you do together now? Ah, uh, yes. Well, it's um, now that we've had uh, now that we've got two kids. Um, we've got a five-year-old and an eight-year-old. Oh. Uh, it's difficult to find babysitting. Um, mm-hmm. every, yeah, like once a week, every, 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 uh, um, one night a week. Particularly week. in the current circumstance, it's like quite difficult. Yes. Yeah. And so it's uh so for the last few years, I've stayed stayed singing at the choir, whereas my my wife hasn't been. But she's got it. But she's singing in a jazz band instead. So she's oh. she's she sings on a Sunday, and I sing on a Monday. And so we're still still um still very much a uh, very musical family. Um and yeah, our son's joined his choir at school. Um uh, and so and he's learning to play the violin and things like that. So oh. very, always music around the house. And uh and uh um our youngest uh she's uh. She just loves singing. She sings along with the radio all the time, and she's constantly wondering. At the moment, she's wandering around singing Christmas carol because mm-hmm. um, it's coming up to Christmas. Is, uh, um, you, so. <laughs> yeah. so yeah, so music's a huge part of our, our lives in terms of uh, uh, in terms of doing it. In terms of something that we do, um, uh, it's not just uh, something we listen to. Uh, in terms of in us, um, I reckon so, it must be adding lots of meaning to your life, right? It's something that's very close to your heart, so. <laughs> It is. It's a. It's very. It's very. Um. Can be very emotionally uplifting to yeah, sing yeah. to sing a beautiful piece of music. Uh. Because we do a lot of classical music, um. In the choir. Um. And my wife sings a lot of jazz jazz stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Um. But also we sing pop music and there's lots of great mm-hmm. um sure. choir arrangements of of pop songs and stuff like that and even rock songs things like that. So. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a. So yeah. It's it's very emotional. Can you can be very um a lot of emotion tied up um because music can be very right. emotive and, and um taking places uh so yeah so in terms of singing and it gives us a shared shared language as a family as well um we all we all um uh it's a shared common interest between right. all four of us um which is which is really which is really great um yeah it's, yeah, it's, 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 really it's, it's great to hear you talking about it so passionately it's uh 
Yeah, I, I can feel your strong emotions <laughs> from this screen. It's, yeah, it's a it's very... a big part of our lives, and yeah, it's a and yeah, even even listening to music as well. It's a it's a, sure, um, yeah. yeah, it's a, it's for me that's also a big part of mindfulness as well. A um, big yeah. part of um yeah. uh, of recharging and um in terms of um preventing burnout. Mm-hmm. For me, as you can imagine, uh, uh, being a parent, there's lots of uh, <laughs> yeah. lots of ups and downs, lots of stresses and things like that, yeah. um, and lots of um, not so fun jobs to do, like the washing and the dishes <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Like that. And yeah. for me, switching on my favorite song or switching on an album that uh, of or listening to Spotify, while it's, I'm doing it's like magic. Thing. It's like instantaneously converts everything, like turns your exactly, yeah. <laughs> so I definitely recommend find yeah. your favorite. With, if you're feeling down or feeling overwhelmed or anything sure. like that, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, turn on your favorite um, mm-hmm. favorite song. And if there's no one around, just dance around like no one's watching, and, and right. just, <laughs> it just makes you feel, feel better, and you'll be able to to tackle the rest of the day. Uh, Definitely, much, yeah. And in in terms of musical instruments, I actually very much enjoy listening to cellos and uh, violins. So yeah. Oh yes, yeah. My son's learning violin, so mm-hmm. probably not. He's he's um yeah. They're beautiful instruments. My yeah. He's only been doing it for a short time, so he, his playing is not so beautiful just yet. You know, like time. sometimes, yeah, love, love sometimes voice. hearing like exceptionally touching performances on violin and even on cellos, like it gets like gives you goosebumps and everything, and it's <laughs> yes, you're, you're, I, yes, I can totally agree. With that. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah right. Okay, yeah, so mm-hmm. right, and um, so finishing up before we end our conversation i just wanted to ask you uh, like i'm very much interested in whenever i talk to a guest who is a parent so i like to know their perspective on parenthood because you know nowadays there's also trend in the western countries and also in south korea where i am based right now so basically the um, people are not becoming choosing to become parents and uh, they're, they're very com- complicated and complex reasons behind that we'll not go into that i just wanted to know ab- about how your life changed after becoming a parent and how has your experience been because most people you know tell me that it's a very meaningful experience for them and it's like life altering in a positive way although it can be very hectic of course handling toddlers and (laughs) making them grow into a full-fledged human being that's something a very tremendous task to take but still people uh, tell me that it's a very meaningful experience and uh, they would never trade it for anything in the life yeah. so um so i wanted to know your how has your experience been like because somewhere down the line i may also become a parent one day right so we never it's, know yeah. so so i wanted to know your experience how has it been like um yes i think i would agree with all of those things yeah it's, it's certainly a very meaningful thing mm-hmm. it just adds a layer of um it's just people you're always connected to there's just a yeah. layer of, it doesn't matter there's there's no um which can have its the downside as well. I mean, it's, sure, it's, sure. you can never fully be a, never fully say I'm going to do whatever I want. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sort of stuff you don't have that sort of freedom to sort of choose, um, to to choose how to live your life just without any um anyone else anyone else's input. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, oh, it's just so, it's a great question. It's a it's if I had to sum it up. The, there's um, before kids, life has sort of ups and downs. And there's ups and downs, and, and just there's, there's good days and bad days. Uh, after kids, mm-hmm. um, the, the bad days can be badder, <laughs> but the but the but the good days are ten times better. So it's a so it's a um, yeah. Oh, there's very, there's very nice there's, analogy. A, mm. Yeah, so it's a there can it's a lot more challenging. Life life becomes more challenging, right? Um, because there's schedules of people like, as well. also people you have to like uh, care, care for more people and these are like uh infants who will become human beings so you have to make sure that <laughs> oh, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very very important yeah it's a it's it's something that it's hard to um it's hard to describe uh, yeah, but yeah. yeah it's like the the most the the children become the most important mm-hmm. thing in your life well they should anyway i think i think um and um, making sure they're okay, making sure they're safe. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I remember when our uh, eldest child was born, our first first child, um, like getting putting them in the car for the mm-hmm. dri- first drive home. That was if you think of the most precious thing that oh. you could ever think of, uh, and yeah. you don't want to damage it. Like that's mm-hmm. times a million. Like it's a it's 
but you just it's just something uh, children is just so mm. the most precious they're just so just so right. precious and and it's important and it's important that you get it right as well so so um so it can be a lot of pressure um to okay. but um on yourself um but to, to, to try and be the best parent you can be oh. um mm. but kids you only need to get it right about 70 percent of the time yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can, you're allowed to make mistakes and kids will survive okay uh, so it's not you don't have to be um the 100 best parent every, every single day which is nobody can do that nobody, yeah. but uh yeah so it's a uh, definitely rewarding definitely a lot of work mm-hmm. but the as i said the the bad days could be a little bit badder uh, yeah, there's a lot right. more there's more pressure um a, a lot of stuff to deal with things like that um but yeah but the it's completely outweighed by the by the um by the good days i understand and, yeah and seeing that seeing the little the first steps and the and the, the first right. words and the first time doing things and it's, so it's one of the amazing. interesting things i noticed is the one one sentence you used actually whenever i ask this to any of the guests so they also almost all the time they have they have used this sentence that is the children become the most meaningful things in your life so this this sentence everybody uses so it's a yes yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's true it's, it's it's true well it's a it's a your um yeah it is and it's a but it's it's good it's a it's a it's a it's meaningful yeah, definitely it's a meaningful yeah. responsibility as well so it's a sense of responsibility as well um and that can have a good um have a have a good effect on um sure yeah. um it's always good to have good responsibilities i guess yeah <laughs> um otherwise yeah. good to keep you focused and on track and, and yeah, in life also that. the responsibilities actually add meaning to our lives so that is something like i think that must be having quite a positive effect on people who take it yes yeah definitely definitely um mm-hmm. yeah one thing i would say though is um it does change your life in a big way yeah, yeah um there are certain things that are that are harder to do once you do have kids um sure. it's harder to yeah. change direction in life and things like that like if i had kids mm-hmm. back when i decided to to, to leave chemical engineering there's no way i could just leave for a year and just drive off and and, and yeah, go on yeah. to come find myself there's there's no way i can do that now um not that i want to um, mm-hmm. um but it it does add constraints to your life so or, if, mm-hmm. so um so it does have career um uh implications as well mm-hmm. um so a lot of especially in the field of science um like there's a lot of especially for women as well because like i've seen my my wife go through um is a is a scientist she's got she's um has a degree and a phd and everything like that she did all those things before she had kids right um so it would be much harder to do that afterwards sure. so what what tends to what what i've seen in a lot of the the um great women scientists that i that i have in my life Mm-hmm. um they the ones that do have kids they they tend to do a lot of their studying first um mm-hmm. and and then have kids a little bit later in life um because it's a uh yeah research science is a, is a um it's very demanding um and there's still a long way to go in terms of um yeah. in terms of the scientific community mm-hmm. being accommodating for for parents yeah, um for, uh, yeah. for mothers and fathers um but uh yeah so i would certainly uh it's the tense it's it's i'm seeing a trend that tends to be ha- happening mm-hmm. later in life yeah so, right so, mm-hmm. yeah. and nowadays also i'm seeing uh publishers like acs or elsewhere and others are coming forward to celebrating women in science and uh pr- bridging that gap basically that you also talked about like accommodating uh like a, a new mother or a new parent so yeah so i think slowly changes change is happening and uh, hopefully we'll see lots of it in the coming years <laughs> uh, yes, yes yes hopefully it's, yeah. it's very much needed yeah yeah, yeah. i understand yeah that's very much. anyway so uh thank you craig for uh this uh like i think it's one of my longest podcasts so far <laughs> sorry I can, yeah it's, don't stop me talking sometimes yeah uh, no, i'm usually introverted quite an introverted person but yeah oh, <laughs> it's the same thing for me honest. actually i'm i'm not that uh extroverted like i don't uh um, usually enjoy being around people only very selected people but through this um through the podcast which i'm doing i get to talk with various people so i'm very much interested in knowing about their lives and what they do the technical side of it the non technical side of it and everything so it's also helping me connect to humanity at large like you are in australia and i also like in the last week i had uh, victoria from ireland 
So it's like uh, different parts of the world. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's great. And any one thing I found through my um, through my life and career is it's it's always good to have as many experiences as you can and yeah. and, and and say yes to things. Um, I think it's 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 easy as an introverted person to say no to things. Like, oh, that's scary. I haven't done that before. Uh, yeah. um, but the more you can try to say yes to things, like, oh, I haven't done it before, but I'll I'll give it a go. Um, sure, yeah. And you never know what. Um, what new skill you might find or <laughs> what new person, you, what new friend you might make or, or what new um, career opportunity you might, sure. you might find. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much, Craig. And do you have any uh, final comments or questions for me or otherwise we'll uh, end? Um, yeah, no, other than great. Uh, this is a fantastic podcast and mm -hmm. thank you for having me on. Sure. And yeah. um, mm -hmm. I've, I've certainly, you're a great interviewer. I, I certainly, <laughs> okay. have, um, I've, I, 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 watched some of your interviews in preparation for this and um i was it put me at ease quite a lot i was a bit nervous this is, i've never been on an interview never been interviewed for a podcast before so um mm -hmm. uh seeing your your manner uh in, in um being an interviewer uh certainly put me at ease so oh, thank um, you very much Craig. Yeah, look forward to seeing more of your podcasts and um sure, oh, yeah. def you've definitely got a new listener for your, for your podcast. <laughs> okay yeah thank great. you very much great stuff. and craig and uh have a good time and um hopefully i can get you down the line some down the line where we can talk more stuff if you if you would like and um, yeah let's stay in touch definitely, yeah, yeah yes definitely definitely, definitely we'll get that. okay thank you very much craig thanks. and have a good one yeah, yeah. thank you yeah bye bye bye, -bye. bye.